Well, it may have come around fast, but it's now the 1st of January 2022, so a Happy New Year to everyone. On this day, particularly where I'm from, we like to think about new beginnings and positive futures. New Year's resolutions are on the mind, and even though in my case they're likely to fall off in about a month, <clears throat> a week, it's nice to think about what the next 12 months might bring. Given that these last couple of years have been hard on most of us, staying positive is now more important than ever. Ecce faustum amici, nuntiat anum inque meo primus carmine janus adest. Behold a lucky year for you, my friends, announced by Janus, who appears in my very first verse. With that in mind, I wanted to bring us back all the way to the Romans, the people who introduced us to the concept of a January New Year's Day, and share how they celebrated it with all of you. Life was hard back then as well, but it didn't stop the Romans staying positive and staying partying. A little bit of history first, of course. Now, the Romans began celebrating the New Year originally on the 15th of March, which they called the Ides of March. This is a familiar date to us, which as we'll see plays into this subject a little ironically. They started celebrating then because it was the date of the first full moon in the old Roman lunar calendar. It was commemorated by the festival of Anna Perenna, ancient Roman goddess representing the passage of time over the course of the year. The old Romans would drink, eat and revel like there was no tomorrow on this day. And when the kingdom became a republic, the Ides of March became the day that new consuls would be elected into office. This New Year's festival continued on this day even past 153 BCE, when consuls started being elected in on the 1st of January. But it's January now, so let's skip ahead to the late Republic in 46 BCE with the introduction of the Julian calendar, which made January the first month and the first, or calends, of January, the date of the new, new year. The irony then is that the change was of course legislated by Julius Caesar, who was famously killed on the Ides of March. The old marker of new beginnings became the marker of his end. But despite that, New Year's Day, from then until even now, with very few deviations, remained on the 1st of January. This is of course the case for the majority of the Western world, not including other New Year's Days like that of the Chinese New Year, Islamic New Year or Rosh Hashanah in the Jewish calendar. It was quite a fitting day for Romans really. While there may not have been a full moon, it now landed on the first day or calends of Mensis Januarius, the month of Janus. In Roman mythology, Janus was the god who sheltered Saturn when Jupiter overthrew him. That's why the Januarii are celebrated just after the famous Saturnalia, one festival for Saturn's visit to Earth, and then the next for his host Janus. Janus was the two-faced Roman deity of beginnings, change, passages, and of ends. He was a Roman deity with no explicit Greek counterpart, and I can't really think of anyone better suited to oversee the new year. It began and ended with him. He also oversaw the calends of each subsequent month, and even oversaw each morning. Now, on to the celebrations. New Year's Day was a happy one for Romans, full of well-wishing and gift-giving. If the Latin poets are anything to go by, then it would begin with some warm prayers for a good harvest and good omens. The poet Ausonius cried out, Anne bonis coepte auspicis da vere salubri apricas ventorum animas. O oh year, beginning with good omens, give us winds of sunny breaths in healthy spring. And Ovid entreated Janus to otia terra ferrax, otia pontus habet, dextera des patribusque tuis populoque quirini, et resera nutu candida templa tuo. Bring plentiful peace on land, plentiful peace on sea. Do right by your Quirotine Roman fathers and people, and lay open with your nod the shining temples. This is because the temples would be ceremonially reopened in the new year, with the new consuls elect under the watch of Janus, god of, as I mentioned earlier, passages. These prayers would be offered up to Janus before the other gods with Tura Merumque, 
incense and unmixed wine, so that through him passages to the other gods would be opened up. After their prayers, Romans would exchange gifts with their family and, later in the day, their friends. These gifts could be dried figs, cariotai, small dates, or even niweo candida mella, honey that glistens like snow, according to Ovid. Another gift, very particular to the calends of January, were what the Romans called strenai, literally meaning good omens. Strenai were little coins which accompanied the snacks in making sure that the new year would be as sweet as they were. The giving and receiving of strenai wasn't just limited to friends and family either. They could be gifted by wealthy patrons to their clients, by the rich to the poor, or even from servants to masters. It was a gift that extended beyond social class and could be given or received by anyone. And, crucially, it was customary for the emperor to gift these strenai to everyone. You see, on the first day of the year, the election of the consuls would go hand in hand with games and festivals. These events were a perfect opportunity for people to exchange their gifts, but also for the emperor to give his strenai to everyone at once. Now, if he was a good emperor, some people might just throw a little coin back at him as a gesture of good faith. Suetonius accounts that Augustus received extensive New Year's gifts, which he proceeded to spend on summa pretiosissima deorum simulacra, some very, very expensive statues of the gods, which he put up in the public streets. Caligula, on the other hand, famously insisted that people give him the New Year's gifts, and when they threw gold at him in the entrance to his home, he stood barefoot upon the growing mountain of money and toto cupore aliquandiu volutatus est. He rolled his whole body round and round in the gold. A nice little juxtaposition between those two emperors. For the Russell Crowe gladiator fans out there, it was actually on New Year's Day that Commodus did something a little different to his predecessors too. Instead of appearing out of the Imperial Palace on New Year's Day, he walked from the gladiatorial barracks into the arena, flanked by gladiators and dressed in armour instead of the magnificent Imperial Purple. Anti de te seuparufu cae basilices porfuras hopula teautos feron. Between these festivities, Roman citizens would feast and walk around the city together happily. Cicero says that he and his best friend Titus Atticus had their annual walk together around this day. And as Pliny says of everyone else, Primum anni incipientis diem, laetis precationibus in vicem faustum omina amor. On the first day of the year, we wish joyous prayers of good luck upon each other. Really, it's a sort of hyper-religious version of us saying Happy New Year to strangers as we pass by them today. So, with that little flashback of New Year's Day in the Roman Kingdom, the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire, I wish you all a Happy New Year, or in Latin, Felix et Anus Novus in His Calendis Januaris. A Happy New Year on these January calends. And I do hope you're all looking forward to the upcoming celebrations and festivals on the Knowns, the Ides, and many other days in January too.